Hi everyone, it's Arda, and I'm excited to be here today with a two-minute tip for some of the new Essentials by Ellen products in the December release. Last year, Julie created the Confetti Flinger die. It's a fun, interactive element that you add to the inside of a card. This year, the December release includes some goodies that go with the Confetti Flinger, and I'm going to give you a refresher on how it all goes together. Let's start with the card. I used some of the new stamps and dies, including this new letterboard set. It comes with an alphabet that also includes punctuation, basic shapes, and some fun emojis, as well as a frame and the textured letter board. Next up, there's another alphabet set with larger letters. This one also has punctuation and basic shapes, which I used on my card. And then there's High Five, a new stamp set full of hugs and kisses and hearts and a speech bubble. Matching dies are available. It also includes this little three heart stamp, which I used on my card base to make it look like the hearts were being blown along with the kisses in the sentiment. Now getting back to the confetti flinger, there's a new confetti set that includes X's and O's as well as little lips and hearts. There's a tic-tac-toe die that cuts stitched lines into your cardstock that can be used with these icons, but I'm going to use them as confetti. I've got them cut and sitting ready in a little container off to the side. And finally, the confetti flinger die. As I said, this die was released about a year ago. I cut the flinger from 80 pound white cardstock. This weight gives the perfect flexibility for this project. The front of the die has a little X embossed onto it so that you can tell which side you're working with. But I stamped the front with some of the hearts. This will give some pops of colors to the inside of my card. I cut the envelope portion from a scrap of red vellum that I had in my stash, but you can use glassine paper or even lightweight pattern paper. First, you need to fold the flinger mechanism on all the score lines. I used a bone folder to make sure that my edges were crisp. There are flaps on both sides and also horizontal score lines, so it's almost like you're making a little box. Once you have everything scored, it's time to put strong adhesive on the back of the six flaps. Then remove the release paper and stick those flaps to the back of the mechanism. Next, take some scissors and snip into the four holes that are on the mechanism. You just want there to be a slit from the edge into the hole for the elastics that will create the spring. And then, put some more strong adhesive on the front of the top and bottom flaps. To create your spring, grab two little elastics. I used those loom bands that were all the rage not too long ago. Loop one through the other so that they're joined together and then put them onto the mechanism. Looping one elastic through the holes at the top and the other elastic through the holes at the bottom. To create the confetti holder envelope, fold the corners into the center along the score lines. You want to be fairly precise here because any overlap will make it harder for the confetti to push through. Glue the envelope to the confetti flinger where the X is embossed. Stamping that big heart there didn't do much for me on the final card since it disappeared behind the vellum, but it did make it easy for me to remember where that little X was. So now the mechanism is fully together and we can put it in the card. But before that, I stamped another sentiment from the High Five stamp set on the inside of the card with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. To glue the mechanism into the card, you position it far enough down from the top so that there's room to push it up into the armed position. Take the release paper off the two flaps and adhere them to the card base with the flinger envelope at the bottom. Here's a couple of trial runs so you can see how it will move. Then all you have to do is fill your envelope with confetti. Close the envelope, but don't seal it in any way. Then move the mechanism up and close the card. At this point, you would put it into a mailing envelope, but I'm going to show you in slow motion how it works. Isn't that fun? Here are a couple of close-ups of the mechanism from the top and then from the side. Imagine the surprise that the recipient will get when they open this up. I hope you enjoyed this little video. There are so many fun goodies in this release, and I know that the rest of the design ambassadors have been working to give you lots of inspiration and ideas. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to this channel for even more inspiration.
Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day.